Now, did you see when I attached this, did you see what I had going on here, guys? This here's another variation. Now, I can take this guy right here. I can take this bead chain, this siwash hook, I can hook it up on here like I had it. I can put a shrimp right on here, a chunk of bait shrimp. Send this plug down to the bottom, go like crazy, and I can catch fish. Am I going to do it right now? No. But you said if they're moving through, I can do it. If you go down there in the fall when they're moving through, this thing will kick butt. Whatever color is working, millions of colors. You may go down three weeks later, and this isn't kicking butt, but the water's maybe still moving. Let's see if we're biting it. Remember the, the frog? Well, this is too much going on. So all we had to do is put it out behind, get the bait away from it a little bit. When you run flashers, you go to the ocean for the salmon. What is it? Well, you, for the coho, it's 42 inches. And for the Chinook, it's 60 inches, 72 inches. Guys, it's, that length is all predicated off of how active they are. They could bite it 18 inches away from it if they're on it. The more inactive they become, the further you better get that attractor away from that offering. Same principle here. In the fall, you can go down with that shrimp right on that hook, right on that bait, and get them. And then as it progresses and starts to die off, you get it back here. Then once that stops, you better start bobber fishing because they're held up. They're in their spots. Seth, I don't, have a, I don't have a jet boat. My wife won't let me. Let's not blame it on your wife. You just don't have a good enough paying job. <laughs> Or you just take up fishing for a living like me and they quit complaining. They want you want to eat? Guess what? I'm fishing. I gotta go. <laughs> you can use this little guy right here. You can use a planer board. I like this one because I make money on it when you buy it. There are other manufacturers, we won't name them. You want this one. <laughs> Here's what you do. Seth told me that in the fall, they're moving through. They're going to be in the oxygenated areas. I need to be up in here. I can back troll my plug. But I don't have a $60,000 boat with a heater and a radio and a fridge and a toilet and a you know what, whatever. Here's what you do. If you're like me when I was younger, you pull up in your 73 four-door Impala. <sighs> you kick the door open and you deploy your jet boat. Okay? Now when you rig this guy up, you rig this up like a slip bobber. <clears throat> this is what this thing was invented to do. My good friend Jim Spicklemeyer that invented it down in Grangeville was a guide on the salmon. Got sick and tired of not being able to fish six guys out of the boat when it was back trolling season. When you're paying money, you want to catch fish. You run two lines, you got to sit there and rotate. You put six out there, you're going to have a lot more chances going on. Two pull permits now, keep that in mind. Here's what you do. You got your planer board. You've got a small bead. You've got your line coming through. You've got a barrel swivel. You've got your leader, six feet. You've got your diving plug back here. Oh, that's a great drawing. Then you've got your corky set up or you've got the straight hook on here. Excuse me. The straight hook on here with the shrimp, okay? whatever they're wanting. What you do is you take this guy, you tie it all up, you take and pull about 15 to 20 feet of line out on the ground. However deep the hole is, if it's a little deeper you can go more. You hook your release in, the river's coming down, you're on the right hand side of the bank. You hook it in, you swing it out. Now what you do is you kind of got that slack line going, and then you just kind of flip it out into the river once that board starts to pull. What happens is if you let that line out into the river and then hook it up, it's going to dive down and get in the moss. You want that plug to float as it's going out in the river. Once you get it to where you want to be, where it's coming through that riff on the edge, natural funnel, you park it. Now it's just out there doing its thing. That guy goes by, ah, oh, 20, 40, 60, 80 million dollars in gas. As you sit there drinking your soda, spending nothing. That's how you back troll in the river. I don't have a boat. Yes, you do. Same principle. When a fish hits, it releases, this thing floats, you fight the fish, you get it up, 
This comes down, hits the bead, hits the swivel, just like a bobber, you net the fish. Same theory on the, on the bank? All the same off the bank, right off the bank. Guys, you get out in a boat, if you have one, and you're back trolling, you got four or five of your buddies out there, guess what, we're all fishing. We're taking up the whole river. What I like to do with it is I'll take and maybe run a couple out this way, if I got two of us, two boards out this side of the boat. Maybe there's a funnel that comes through, it's got a steep edge on both sides, and we're right in that transition to bobber fishing. I'll run this thing over, two of them, park them, fishing this seam. Then we'll throw off this side with bobbers. Now we're back trolling. If the back trolling's working, maybe we'll put all the boards out. If the bobber's fishing, we bring these in and we bobber fish. It allows me to test the water. Get four lines, five, six, whatever, out fishing with it. Spread this out. Covers the water. Creates a net back there. More stuff in the water, more odds. So it can be done. No, you don't cast it. You don't cast it. You just drop it in the current and let it go. Yeah, pull it out. To, guys, I, you can run this thing all the way across clear water. All the way across. You get up on the road and you can, I mean, you can go all the way across. You want to hit that hole over there, just let it go. Leave it sit there. Set up some rocks like a rod holder with the rod tip high and just let it go. When one hits, man, you know it. It's just like a bobber. It takes off. Back trolling. What is back trolling? I don't even know what the back trolling is. And that's probably my fault. I didn't cover it good enough. I'm trying to cook through this thing here. What back trolling is, if you have your boat and you've got the river coming like this, okay? Isn't that awesome? It's, I'm, look, I'm looking for like a spurt of water coming out, and like a, a story that used to get read to me as a kid, you know? It's Moby. It's Moby, it is. And you got the current coming this way. Typically what you can do is you can drop your motor and hold in the current, let your baits down, so your baits aren't really moving. They're down there doing this, but you're holding in the current or you're slowly backing up. A lot of guys will take and drop an anchor down, put the lines out the back and let them sit. Sometimes when you're back trolling, it's better to let the boat go back because you can back it into the fish. If they're coming up or they're maybe sitting, you can back it to them. You're not really looking to move. You're, you're not moving at all. All you're doing is setting your rod out there and the plug's diving down, getting into the bottom, and you're waiting for them to swim to you. And you're still talking about the deep areas where the channel is. No, when you're doing this type of thing right here is when they're moving. When I like to do this, guys, when I set up the back troll. Well, wouldn't that theory still work? Uh, not when they're. Well, the problem is, Ken, the, the flows in those deep holes, the water's too slow. Okay. If you anchor up and put your plug out, it just sits there. It won't go down. Not enough current moving. What I like to do, if you've got this like this again, and we've got, we've got this kind of thing going again, like this, what I'll do, this is my funneled area, right? They're going to have to come through there. Remember, if we look down on top, that's usually where the fast water's funneling in. What I like to do is put my boat up in this area. Let my plugs go down here and get them when they start to push up out of this hole. I like to be up on the upside, right here. Get them as they're moving out. Or, remember when we talked about how it bellies up and there's a riffle in the backside? Maybe I put my boat up here and feed it to them as they're dropping down into that to rest. Top of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Same principle, but I'm fishing them where they're gonna be coming out at, where they're moving through. Okay, some angles I'm reading now say to, to try to pick a scene. A lot of guys you'll see them going back and forth in the same spot. I'm on there. They say park on a scene, and and if you're slipping, slip on that scene rather than crossing the river. Uh, the reason why they say that is because if I'm out there and you're cutting back and forth in front of me, I'm gonna throw rocks at you. <laughs> There's a yes and a no to that. Remember how we talked about the ledge and the holding? If you can visually see that then yeah. There's a spot where we fish and it's real narrow and it's a, it's, it's a funnel like this. And the riffle is right here and it goes like this and this is where it pulls up and it's fast and it's slow. We'll put the boat right here and when you drop your rod out to the side there's a ledge right here and you'll hold right on that ledge. If you're fishing a big 
section of water, you may want to do a little of that. It's just like dissecting the water with your bobber. You're trying to find where they're holding that. Once you find where they're holding that, you see it down salmon fishing on the Columbia. When you go through your back throw with your cut plug diver, whatever you're running, and you get a hit and you get a fish, when you go back forward, you best go right back down that thing again. But you may have to find it. If you don't know where to go, and you can't visually see the ledge or the funnel coming through, you're going to want to do a little of that until you find it, until you get a bite, just to search it out. But yeah, once you find them, go straight, straight back, straight into them. But you still want to search it out. We're always, until we find them, we're always moving. So when do you determine, or how do you determine, the time when they're moving and when they're not moving? When they're moving is when you go down and the water's clear and you get some runoff. Remember, once the water gets a little bit muddy and starts to rise up, they're moving. They sense that flow change, they sense that clarity, that clarity change. So September through October, in that period of time. They're going to be in the faster water because of the oxygen is higher. Okay. That's when the guys go down and have the best luck fly fishing, yeah. because they swing through the rapids. Those fish are up there shallow in the oxygen. Okay. Same principle for the back trolling or side drifting. So then January through, well, December through February is pretty much going to be bobber fishing. Not to say that you can't. Chad's buddies were down yesterday, Chad. They hooked 19 fish side drifting. 25 fish and landed 19. Where? Down at Clearwater. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They just got into a spot where the fish were held up, and, but they were in a boat side drifting. Where you could, you could get out in a deeper hole and side drift with the boat. For the us, we watch this side grip. They're using about that much pencil lead. They're not getting to the bottom. Uh, you may not think they're getting to the bottom. The thing you have to realize with the boat, guys, that's why you can get away with less lead in the boat. If you got your boat here, right, and the current's going this way, that boat is moving with the pencil lead. So it takes less to get it down there. When you throw out, when you throw out from the river and you throw, your current's changing. When you throw up high, it's driving it down. Boom. As it comes by you and starts to go past you, the current's wanting to push it up. When the boat drifts with it, you are staying right in that zone of basically equalness. Where the boat's going down, that's what you want. The boat going down and the line's going out to the side. And you get away with less lead. They're not just floating aimlessly through there. They're getting to the bottom. It's because the boat's moving with the lead. Good to hear. Yep. It's lightweight. They're sensitive. They can feel that going down through there. A lot of those guys, they got you know their own egg cures. I mean, all different types of things. But yeah, the guides just clean up. They're down there every day. They know where those fish are holding at, where they've moved to. That's the key. They're percentage fishing because they know where they're at by sitting on them every day. That's what makes it tough for us. We got to go down there and go through the progressions because we don't know where they're at, sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> we call them destroyers. Yeah. I've, I've never gone out with one, and I probably never will. And there's a lot of good ones out there. And I was actually, before I started the show, I was thinking about doing it. And some of my buddies said, man, I'll just ruin it for you. Yeah. Don't do it, you know. But, I mean, there are good ones, don't get me wrong. But there are those ones that, yeah, you want to get in a fist fight with. They own it. They own it. I've been there. Done that. Exactly.